Okay, well, we'll get started here. Thank you everyone for joining us. I'm Cindy Erickson and I'm a tour coordinator with West World Tours and I'll be facilitating the presentation this evening. Joining me is our tour director, Carrie Carpenter, and she'll be sharing with you some of the great sights and attractions you'll experience on our tour to Atlantic Canada. Welcome, Carrie. Hello, everyone. So before I turn the uh, presentation over to Carrie this evening, I just have a couple things to go over with everyone. Uh, first of all, we do have everybody on mute. So if you would like to ask a question, please type your question into the Q&A box, which is located on your screen. And we do encourage you to type that question in there at any time throughout. Um, don't wait till the end of the presentation, but we will get to everybody's comments and questions at the um, end of the presentation. And if you're joining us on Facebook, you can enter your questions into the comment section there and we will get to your questions there as well. Let everybody know about our future presentations that are coming up. Uh, we've got our Black Hills presentation on January 31st at 7 o'clock p.m. This, this is all Central Standard Time. And following that is our new tour. We're going to be launching to Thailand. We'll be doing a presentation on that February 7th at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on February 15th, right after Valentine's Day, we're going to have Carrie back to join us once again and talk to us all about our tour land and sea tour to Hawaii. Again, that's February 15th at seven o'clock PM. Now, if you'd like to um, stay updated with all of our future presentations and uh, you know our current and new tours as we've added them, we encourage you to sign up for our website, or, pardon me, our, our um, newsletter, our email newsletter. We won't inundate you with emails and you can unsubscribe at any time. And to do that, we encourage just go to the, our website, westworldtours.com slash subscribe. And you can sign up right there and you will stay informed and up to date. So here's a quick uh, preview of our next week's uh, presentation, which is our tour to the oh, best of Thailand I've got on there. So I do apologize. That is... Um, Am I messed up here? Yeah, February 7th. So here's a preview of what's coming up February 7th. It's our Best of Thailand tour, which we're going to be launching that uh, that night. So here's a little preview. That tour is going to depart November 25th. It's 15 days in total, and it will include 33 meals. So you'll embark on an exhilarating journey through the enchanting landscapes and vibrant culture of Thailand on our extraordinary tour to Thailand. Picture yourself navigating the bustling streets of Bangkok, where the aroma of street food beckons and the golden temples stand as timeless witnesses to the city's rich history. In the north, you'll discover the cultural haven of Chiang Mai, where mist-kissed mountains and ancient temples create an atmosphere of serene beauty. As you journey south, be prepared for tropical paradise, sink your toes into the pristine sands of Krabi and Phuket, where turquoise waters stretch as far as the eye can see. So hopefully you'll be able to join us um, for that uh, presentation, which is a new tour for us. We're very excited about it. So a little bit about uh, Western Globe Tours. We are Western Canada's premier tour company, and we've been serving Canadians from coast to coast with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world since 2000. Presenting quality components, including modern comfortable coaches, pardon me, <laughs> modern comfortable coaches, professional tour directors like Carrie, experienced courteous drivers, baggage handling and excellent accommodations. We take in all the important sites and attractions and include several meals throughout. Thousands of passengers have chosen our first class style of touring, enjoying the great value, security, and stress-free environment, all while making new friendships along the way. And we know our tour directors enjoy getting to know you while on tour and love to see your familiar faces. So hopefully we can welcome you all on board um, 
one of our Westworld tours soon. So a little overview here of our Atlantic Canada tour, um, which departs July 31st to August 22nd this coming summer. Uh, together, the provinces of New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia and PEI boast Canada's most spectacular coastlines with an abundance of amazing experiences waiting for you to enjoy. Check out Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada's easternmost province, where you can go whale watching, cruise through the seabird capital of North America, and explore North America's only authentic Viking settlement. You'll spend time in Nova Scotia, exploring the iconic lighthouse at Peggy's Cove, the scenic Cabot Trail, and the many National Historic Sites. Prince Edward Island is ideal for beachcombers, bird watchers, and home to vibrant Charlottetown, and the, far, and the famous farmhouse from literature's novel, Anne of Green Gables. You'll get to drive across the Confederation Bridge to New Brunswick, take in the sights at Hopewell Rocks, where the highest tides in the world happen twice a day. You'll sail out of Canada's oldest seaside resort town, St. Andrews by the Sea, on a whale watching boat tour, and drive across the sea floor at low tide to visit Minister's Island. You'll discover the compelling beauty of Atlantic Canada, where locals welcome you with open arms and a culture so rich you can't help but be inspired as you enjoy the epic vistas along the way. And without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce you to Carrie Carpenter. Um, Carrie, having grown up in a family where travel has always been important, Carrie loves to travel, meet and spend time with people, and learn about different cultures and places around the world. Carrie has been with Westworld Tours since 2013, spending many a summer guiding our tours through Newfoundland and Labrador, bringing a great deal of knowledge and experience to her role as tour director to this beautiful part of our country. So again, welcome Carrie. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for putting the presentation together and advancing the slides. And welcome to everyone joining us this evening. On this introduction slide, this is one of my favorite pictures, and I would love to introduce you to these Vikings of Newfoundland. Next slide, please. These two combined tours includes so many wonderful attractions, historical sites, including several UNESCO World Heritage sites, city tours, lighthouses, the Confederation Bridge, and the list goes on. There are several cities where we will stay more than one night, St. John's, Newfoundland, Clarenville, Rocky Harbor, St. John, New Brunswick, Halifax, Sydney, and Charlottetown. Some people get confused with St. John's, Newfoundland and St. John, New Brunswick. Next slide, please. You might be wondering what the difference is when you hear people referring to the maritime provinces and the Atlantic provinces. Atlantic Canada includes the provinces of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, and Labrador. The maritime provinces consist of just three provinces, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. The word maritime is an adjective that means of the sea. Newfoundland and Labrador is the newest of Canadian Canada's 10 provinces. It joined Confederation in 1949, and in 2001, its name was officially changed to Newfoundland and Labrador. Okay, next slide. Newfoundland and Labrador is the easternmost province of Canada. Newfoundland is an island, and just across the Strait of Belle Isle is Labrador. It borders the province of Quebec and a small land border with the territory of Nunavut. The border between the province of Quebec and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador is the longest interprovincial border in Canada. The top right-hand picture is in Red Bay, Labrador, and that's on a mozzie day. That's Newfoundland slang for damp and muggy. Out west, we would just call it foggy, like it was here today. 
The bottom right-hand picture shows the coastline and steep cliffs that are examples of what the actions of the waves of the North Atlantic Ocean does to the ancient rocks composition and thousands of years of continuous coastal erosion. Okay, next slide. The town of Deer Lake is located at the intersection of the Trans-Canada Highway and the Viking Trail on Newfoundland and Labrador's west coast. It's the gateway that provides access to the Northern Peninsula and Labrador. The bottom right-hand picture is the Lobster Cove Lighthouse. Lighthouses come in varying shapes and sizes and also how they were fueled and the different light apparatuses required that made them work. For generations of mariners along the coast, the lighthouses were their only connection to land while out on the dark sea. The bottom picture shows Grosmore National Park. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it covers 1,805 square kilometers. The tablelands were half a billion years in the making. For more than 400 million years of those towering mountains eroding were needed to reveal what we see today, the surreal barren orange landscape, the earth's inner soul, the mantle that is exposed for us to see. And that's the picture at the bottom in the center there. Okay, next slide, please. As we travel along the Viking Trail, we will visit Lanza Meadows. It's a national historic site and it's on the tip of the Great Northern Peninsula. We will see the remains of an 11th century Viking settlement where the Vikings established their first European settlement and enjoy the interaction from Parks Canada staff in some of the reconstructed sod buildings. In the bottom right hand corner there, you can see the Parks Canada staff um, they do dress up in costume period clothing. Okay, next slide, please. Arriving in St. Anthony, we will visit the Granville Interpretation Center and Dr. Grenfell's house, which is in the middle of the slide presentation there. Dr. Grenfell was a medical missionary who was originally from England and he was sent in 1892 to Newfoundland and Labrador to investigate the state of the fishery. This was the start of his lifelong work to aid people of an isolated coast, ice blocked and inaccessible for many months of the year. He was devoted to improving the life of the people and Dr. Grenfell practiced medicine. He built hospitals, he established schools and orphanages and he became a legend in his own time. Two of the pictures there show some of the ceramic Geordie Benet murals that were created and fabricated by the Montreal artist in 1967. After working up an appetite today, this evening, we will step back in time and we're going to partake in a Viking feast. And in the bottom right hand corner, the two pictures at the bottom, it's in a reconstructed saw building and we're going to eat some of the traditional foods and followed with an evening of entertainment. Next slide, please. We will enjoy a ferry ride across the Strait of Bell Isle to Labrador, and then we will continue on to Red Bay. During the mid 16th century, large numbers of Wright and Bowhead whales drew whalers from the Basque region of Spain and France to the Strait of Bell Isle. They established a major whaling port at Red Bay. For some 70 years, the Basque whalers made the dangerous month long journey across the Atlantic to hunt whales and produce the oil that lit the lamps of Europe. Next slide, please. The lighthouse on the right is the Point Moore Lighthouse in Labrador. You will have the opportunity to climb 132 stairs to the top and experience the daily tasks of the lighthouse keeper. It was built in 1857 and it stands 33.2 meters or 109 feet tall. It is the tallest lighthouse in Newfoundland and Labrador and the second tallest in Canada. 
1996, after 138 years of continuous operation, the light at Point Amour was converted to an automatic system. Next slide, please. The next morning, after our ferry ride, we will stop at the arches. They are a geological formation that were formed over millions of years as a result of glacial action, wind and water erosion, and several other environmental changes. And to this day, severe storms continue to change the arches. And that's a picture of them in the middle there, the ferry that we take to Labrador at the bottom, and a picture of Red Bay at the top right-hand corner. Next slide, please. Continuing back down the Viking Trail, we will stay at a fun little town called Rocky Harbor. We often will find sea glass as they are washed up along the shoreline. If you don't know what sea glass is, there are pieces of glass from broken bottles, broken tableware, and even some shipwrecks that are rolled and tumbled in the ocean for years until all of the edges are rounded off and the slickness of the glass has been worn to a frosted appearance. There's several different colors depending on what type of glass bottle or plate they came from. Blue is the hardest to find. Um, you may be familiar with the sea glass necklaces or earrings. They're often a popular souvenir to bring back. In the evening, we will be entertained at the Anchors Away show with popular Newfoundland songs, lots of fun and laughter. Next slide, please. We will be stopping to learn about the unique history of the Atlantic salmon. We will admire them in their natural environment as they migrate upstream to their spawning ground. In Gander, we will check out the North Atlantic Aviation Museum. We'll hear about Gander's role in the development of the transatlantic aviation and drive to the Silent Witness Memorial to pay tribute to the 256 individuals who lost their lives on December 12, 1985 in the Aero air crash. Next slide, please. By the time European contact with Newfoundland began in the early 16th century, the Beothuk were the only Indigenous group living permanently on the island. They largely attempted to avoid contact with European settlers in order to preserve their cultural. The establishment of English fishing operations on the outer coastline of the island and their later expansion into bays and inlets cut off access to the Beothuk's traditional sources of food. By the 18th century, they were driven further inland, violence escalated, both of them competed for resources. By the early 19th century, violence, starvation, and exposure to tuberculosis had decimated the Beothuk population, and by 1829, they were extinct. The picture on the left is the Spirit Garden, they give us uh, ribbons and shells and things inside the building and we take them and we hang them in the spirit garden. To the right is a sign of Joey Smallwood and that's at the Gambo Lookout. Joey was elected premier and he dominated for 23 years before he was ousted in 1972. Next slide, please. On this day, we will visit Prime Birth. Captain Dave has never forgotten the priceless time spent and the lessons learned in his father's fishing stage, and he has set up a heritage center for us to enjoy. In the top left-hand corner, Bill is holding an ugly stick. Now, if you don't know what an ugly stick is, it's a traditional Newfoundland musical instrument. It's fashioned out of household and tool shed items, typically a mop handle, they put some bottle caps on it, some tin cans, some small bales, and other noisemakers. The instrument is played with a drumstick or a notch stick, and it has a distinctive sound. Next slide, please. This day is full of adventure, where we will spend the morning at leisure in Trinity 
enjoying the heritage buildings as we check out the Cooperage, the blacksmith shop, St. Paul's Anglican Church that was built in the late 1800s, the Hiscock House, as well as many of the other buildings. And before leaving town, we will be sure to stock up on Aunt Sarah's chocolates. After lunch, we will tour the lighthouse at Cape Bonavista. It was built in 1843. And the light at Cape Bonavista is one of the, of the few in the world where you can still climb up the stone tower and see the same seal oil fueled light apparatus that was used in the 1800s using a mirror to focus light. We will make a stop at Ryan premises and learn the rich history. Oh, go back a slide. So on, um, yeah, we will, well, we're gonna make a stop at Ryan premises, learn the rich history of the Newfoundland cod fishery and the stories of the Ryan family. And on the top left-hand corner, that's where Ryan premises is. It was once the home of James Ryan, one of Newfoundland and Labrador's largest salt fish mercantile firms. He was the son of an Irish immigrant who, along with the brothers, took over his father's business and built it into an international trading company in the late 19th and the early 20th century. Okay, next slide, please. The picture on the top right shows the view from the height of land with two boats in the water, and that's a very craggy coastline. The bottom left shows the highway that we travel with the beautiful scenery as we drive by. The bottom right-hand corner is the dungeons, and we will see that's a collapsed sea cave with a natural archway, and it's been carved by the sea. Next slide, please. Over 150 years ago, the first successful transatlantic telegraph cable was landed at Hart's Content, reducing the time to communicate across the Atlantic from weeks to minutes. The technology revolution had begun and changed the way that they communicated. This little Newfoundland town remained a global communication hub for over a century. The cable station is a time capsule of the communications technology that connected us all right up to the 1960s. Next slide, please. The bottom left-hand corner picture shows the capital city, St. John's. The big building in the top center of the skyline is the rooms. It can be seen from almost any point in St. John's. The rooms is a cultural facility. It opened in 2005 and it houses the art gallery, as well as the Provincial Museum and the archives. The building's name, as well as its architecture, is a reference to the simple gable roofed sheds called fishing rooms. They were once common at the waterline in Newfoundland and all the fishing villages. Dominating the skyline, Cabot Tower, the picture on the left at the top, overlooks the city. It's located on Signal Hill the ocean and the narrow entrance to St. John's Harbor are visible from here. In 1897, Cabot Tower was commissioned to commemorate the 400th anniversary of John Cabot's discovery of Newfoundland and Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. At Signal Hill in December 1901, Marconi and his assistant, George Camp, confirmed the reception of the first transatlantic radio signal with a telephone receiver and a wire antenna kept aloft by a kite, they heard Morse code for the letter S transmitted all the way from Cornwall, England. In the top right corner shows some of the colorful houses. Uh, they refer to them as jelly bean houses. And the bottom picture is the Cape Spear Lighthouse. Cape Spear is the easternmost point in Canada and North America, excluding Greenland. Being the most easterly part of North America and its position on the Atlantic, it has been a strategic importance in defense, transportation, and communications. Because of its location during the Second World War, there were troops stationed there to defend the entrance to St. John's Harbor. Next slide, please. These random pictures show some of the fishing boats they show the crab pots in the bottom right-hand corner. 
They show some of the jelly bean houses on the area just down from Signal Hill. It slopes down there. And the entrance to the North Head Trail actually crosses one of the homeowner's deck as part of the hiking trail due to the terrain. So I always think that's kind of cool. You'll be sitting in your living room and all of a sudden a hiker will pass by on your deck. Next slide, please. On April 12, 1980, Terry Fox dipped his artificial foot in the Atlantic Ocean off of St. John's, Newfoundland to begin his journey across Canada in aid of cancer research. This bronze sculpture of Terry is unique as he is dipping his foot in the water where he began his marathon a hole, and you can see the wave by his foot. The picture of the quilt on the car was the idea of the owner to draw attention to her new quilting store. Some of the ladies collaborated and pieced together the quilt to fit the car. Now, the only problem with this is she has to move the car every few hours so she doesn't get a parking ticket. Some of you may also be interested in thrummed knitting and the knitted trigger finger mitts, among many other beautiful handmade handicrafts throughout both Newfoundland and Labrador. The bottom picture shows some humpback whales, spouting and the puffin and some kitty weights. Next slide, please. We will take a morning cruise watching for humpback and minke whales, dolphins, as well as checking out the Whitless Bay Ecological Reserve that is home to the largest Atlantic puffin colony in North America and other seabirds, including the common myrrh, black-legged kittiwake, and the razorbill auk. From the boat, it's fun to watch the ones that have eaten too much and they can't get enough lift to fly. So the puffins, they flap and run along the surface of the water, floundering before often diving back under the water again because they're too heavy to lift up and fly. Puffins can flap their wings up to 400 beats per minute. They can reach speeds of 55 miles per hour and dive 200 feet below the ocean surface, flapping their wings as if they are flying underwater. While diving, Puffins use their large orange feet to steer so they can hunt for the capelin. Next slide, please. Iceberg Alley refers to a stretch of the Atlantic Ocean that goes from the Arctic to Newfoundland. It's estimated between 400 and 800 medium and large icebergs flow along Iceberg Alley every year. Their speed depends on their shape, size, the winds, the currents and the waves. As for the expression, the tip of the iceberg, it comes from the fact that only about 10% of the iceberg is actually above water. There are many different types of icebergs, tabular, blocky, wedged, pinnacle, dome, and dry dock icebergs. As icebergs drift south, warmer waters accelerate the melting, which makes them dangerously unpredictable. You have to be careful when you're out in a boat looking at the icebergs because you never know if they will shift. The local breweries use the pure water from the icebergs to make the vodka, gin, rum, and beer. As with nature, depending on the time of year, sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't. We will quite often see bergy bits or growlers and they're chunks that have broken off of the large icebergs and actually haven't melted yet. Next slide, please. These are just some of my random photos. The Anukshuks at Red Bay in the top left-hand corner, Lady Slipper plant, and some of the pitcher plants. And the pitcher plant is the provincial flower of Newfoundland and Labrador. Okay, next slide, please. So the Newfoundland Labrador tour can be done as a separate tour or combined as we continue and fly from St. John's to Halifax to tour the Maritime Provinces. The Maritime Fly Tour offers different destinations than the All Coach Tour that Westworld Tours offers. These pictures here are the Old Town of Lunenburg and it's recognized as both a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a National Historic District. Lunenburg is one of the best preserved settlements in North America. It's a fishing village with brightly painted British colonial buildings from the 18th and the 19th centuries. 
In the 1800s, the captains of fishing vessels painted their homes the same bright colors as their boats. It was both a practical means of using up the surplus paint and the unique color scheme allowed the boats to be rapidly identified as they sailed into the harbor. Lunenburg is the home port of the replica, the Blue Nose II, and the birthplace of the original Blue Nose. You can still see the tall ships moored off the port. The bottom right-hand corner picture is the Lunenburg Academy. And we're gonna take a guided walking tour starting at the Lunenburg Academy throughout the town, downhill, learning the history of several buildings, including what a coffin window is. After lunch, we're gonna explore the fisheries of the Atlantic Museum and enjoy the unique shops on the streets. Next slide, please. The unsinkable Titanic struck an iceberg and sank in the frigid North Atlantic waters off Canada's east coast on April 15, 1912, taking about 1,500 lives as it went down. In the top left-hand corner is a picture of the Fairview Cemetery in Halifax. Of the roughly 150 bodies buried in Halifax in three different cemeteries, only a small number have been identified. The rest of the graves are marked with numbers that were assigned to the victims as they were pulled out of the Atlantic. Some have been identified over the years through DNA testing. Researchers believe that they have finally resolved the identity of the unknown child. The bottom right-hand picture is the Maritime Museum on the Halifax waterfront, where we will have time to enjoy the exhibits. It's the oldest and largest maritime museum in Canada with a collection of over 30,000 artifacts. The lighthouse in the middle is the most photographed village in Canada, Peggy's Cove. The historic lighthouse is surrounded by granite slopes that act as a fortress to the narrow inlet offering a safe haven during the raging Atlantic seas. The picture in the bottom left-hand corner shows a fishing boat in Peggy's Cove, and it is still an active fishing village. Next slide, please. The picture on the left is at the Maritime Museum. The top right-hand picture is Peggy's Cove and the lighthouse at the bottom with a couple more pictures of Picture Perfect Lunenburg and the bottom two right-hand pictures. Next slide, please. We will depart Halifax, crossing the Canso Causeway and make our way to Cape Breton Island. We're gonna arrive in Sydney for a two night stay. Next slide, please. From there, we will go on a day trip to the visit the Fortress of Lewisburg. It's a national historic site, which are the two pictures on the left. We're gonna experience what it was like living in the bustling French fortified town in 1744. It was a strategic base for protection of the French fishery and the offshore trade, as well as it guarded approaches to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, which was the main shipping route to Quebec and the North American interior. In the afternoon, we will take a visit and go to the Cape Breton Miners Museum located in Glace Bay, and it will teach us the history of coal mining in Cape Breton region and the infamous company store. Underneath the museum is the Ocean Deep Colliery coal mine that we will have the option of touring with a retired miner. And the museum is also home to the famous choir of miners, the Men of the Deeps. Next slide, please. In the morning, we will visit the Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site. Alexander Graham Bell is known for inventing the telephone as well as many other inventions, including the hydro hydrofoils. Alexander Graham Bell worked extensively in medical research and invented techniques for teaching speech to the deaf. His invention spanned a wide range of interests, including a metal jacket to assist in breathing, and the audio meter to detect minor hearing problems, just to mention a few. 
And the picture in the top right hand corner there is at the Alexander Graham Bell Museum. The Cabot Trail, the pictures on the left are the most photographed and scenic highway on Cape Breton Island. We're gonna make lots of photo stops at the scenic overlooks and take in the stunning panoramic views. It's 298 kilometers around the loop, around the northern tip of the island. We will pass along through the Cape Breton Highlands and the Cape Breton Highlands National Park. Next slide, please. Next, we're off to Prince Edward Island for two nights, traveling by ferry across the Northumberland Strait. We will spend the day touring around Prince Edward Island with a local guide. We will take in a city tour of Charlottetown, the Anna Green Gables house and yard. And we're gonna end our day with the traditional Prince Edward Island lobster dinner. The island is noted by its red sand beaches, fertile farmland, and for its seafood including lobster and mussels. Next slide, please. We will leave Prince Edward Island. We will leave Prince Edward Island traveling to New Brunswick, crossing the Confederation Bridge. It's close to 13 kilometers long. It's the longest bridge in the world to span across the iced over water. Today, we will be making a picture stop at Shediac, the Giant Lobster, and Magnetic Hill to try to unravel the mystery surrounding it. Shediac is an Acadian town known as the lobster capital of the world, and it hosts an annual festival every summer. The Hope Roll Rocks on the bottom in either corner are rock formations known as sea stacks caused by tidal erosion. The Hopewell Rocks are located on the shores of the Bay of Funday at Hopewell Cape. Due to the extreme tidal range of the Bay of Funday, the base of the formations are covered in water twice a day. Next slide, please. Then it's off to St. John, New Brunswick for the next three nights. This area has so much to offer. We're gonna make a day trip to St. Andrews by the sea, enjoy the historical town, before we embark on a well watching tour on the Jolly Breeze Tall Ship. We will watch for seals, go past some lighthouses, beautiful landscapes. We're gonna watch for the porpoise and the whales of the Bay of Funday. At low tide, we will drive on the ocean floor to Minister's Island and enjoy a guided tour of the Van Horn Estate. That's the picture in the top right hand corner. And the picture in the right in the center shows um, once the tide goes down, we will drive across on the ocean floor there. Minister's Island became famous in the last decade of the 19th century as the summer home of Sir William Van Horn. He was the president of the Canadian Pacific Railway. Next slide, please. Our last full day in St. John, we will enjoy a city tour of St. John, visit the Reversing Falls, and have some free time to explore before a farewell dinner. St. John is a seaport city that is located on the Bay of Funday. It's Canada's oldest incorporated city, established by Royal Charter on May 18, 1785. The port is Canada's third largest by tonnage, with a cargo base that includes dry and liquid bulk, Break bulk containers and cruise ships. The city market, which is the length of a full city block, is the oldest market still in operation. At both entrances hang the same gates that have swung closed at the end of each business day since 1880. Crafted from heavy wrought iron, their graceful design is a tribute to the skill and the artistry of the local blacksmith who created them. At the mouth of the St. John River, are the reversing falls. They're rapids that are caused by the strong tides of the bay and at high tide it forces the river to reverse its flow. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and it would be my pleasure to take you on the adventure of a lifetime and show you Atlantic Canada. Well thanks so much Carrie that was awesome.
I myself have yet to get out to um, our eastern provinces. It's always a pleasure to hear you speak about our Atlantic Canada um, and makes me want to go for sure. So I just wanted to clarify that our Atlantic Canada tour is a combination of our Newfoundland tour and our Maritime Fly Coach tour. And we do have two separate um, Newfoundland tours that we're offering for summer of 2024. Our first tour is going to depart June 21st, returning July 2nd. That's a total of 12 days. It includes 13 meals. Our second departure, which is July 31st to August 11th, um, that is the tour that we offer our Atlantic Canada uh, tour on, and it is in conjunction with our Maritimes Fly Coach Tour, which, of course, starts August 11th to the 22nd. Um, separately, the Maritimes Tour itself is 12 days and does it, includes a total of 17 meals. So um, now we can get to your questions. So if you do have any questions, uh, now would be a great time to type them in there. And um, we do have one question here. Carrie, and maybe you would be best to answer this. How much walking is there on the tour itself? What is the activity level, I guess, on the tour? And can someone bring their walker along? Yeah, absolutely. You can bring your walker. Um, you could bring a transport chair if you needed one, your canes. It's about an activity level two. Any spots that um, might be questionable for you, we can always work around. We do everything at our own pace. And is there a quite a bit of walking or is it mainly just to the attraction, like through the attractions, that sort of thing? Yeah, just mainly to some of the attractions. And there's always the option of riding around on the bus if you need to. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Now, I'm not sure if there's any more questions out there. It looks like you've done a great job answering them as we've moved along. So. Again, I just want to reiterate that we offer um, the Maritime separately. We offer the Newfoundland tour itself separately, or you can combine them to create the Atlantic Canada tour. So um, we look forward to everybody joining us. And I just want to mention that we will follow up with everybody that signed up for the presentation this evening. Um, with an email that will provide you with more information on the tours that we've talked about this evening. And uh, Carrie, I want to thank you again for joining us this evening and taking the time uh, to share your knowledge and experience of Newfoundland, Labrador, and the Maritimes with us. And um, yeah, if you have any questions on our tours, we welcome any questions that you might have. Um, we have, uh, you can email us at inquiries at westworldtours.com. You can follow us on Facebook. Um, and you can also contact your local travel agent. They're more than happy, happy to help you uh, with information on any of our tours. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And hopefully you'll join us again for our future presentations. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.